So when looking at the previous example, at the example of objects where we covered saving and, and getting and deleting, the actual code can be quite hard to read and quite hard to follow what's going on. It's because of all the callbacks that are nested inside callbacks. So this is a callback and inside it is another nested callback and it can keep on going down and down and down and down. And that's called callback hell. And it's one of the problems of asynchronous programming, especially, well, specifically when you're using the callback mechanism. We want to execute some code, but only after an operation has completed successfully. So that's why we need callbacks, so that we can be called back when the request returns and we then want to execute code only after that request has completed. But as you can see, this results in some quite messy code. The order of execution is rarely the order that you see it on the screen. So in this situation, comment save, once that's completed, would immediately jump to line 36. We'd proceed some way down the, the lines of code here, and then suddenly we get a callback and we'd be jumped back into line 30. So it, it can, be, can be quite hard to follow what's going on. So another solution to this asynchronous problem, another way of solving this, how do I run code only after a certain action is completed, is to use this concept of promises. Let me show you with an example. So what does post.save actually return? So if I console log this, let's have a look. Refresh the page. Let's hit run. In fact, what might be easier to see is if we inspect, have a look at the the other console, the actual JavaScript console. And let's zoom in on that. Okay, so you can see this is the same console log from line nine here. So it's returning what's called a parse promise. So you can see in there, if we look on the prototype, it's got a bunch of functions that's available on this object. So this doesn't look like anything like a post. It's got a function called done, fail, reject, resolve, and then and always as well. So post.save doesn't return the post objects that save to the server. Since by the time the save function exits, all we've done is we've sent the initial request to start saving. It doesn't have the response yet, so it can't return the generated post object, the saved post object. Instead, it returns something called a promise. And a promise is exactly what it sounds like. The function save promises to let you know when it gets a response back from the server. That's what a promise is. The promise object that's returned has a few functions. The main one you'll want to use is that function called then. So let me show you how to use promises. So post.save returns a parse promise. Parse promise has available to it a function called then. So we just do dot then to call that function. And the then function takes as a parameter, another function. So the first parameter to this, to the then function is the success callback. And the second parameter is the function that gets called when the save, or if the save fails to complete on the server side, if there's an error. And in fact, just to make it clear, I like to just call them success and error. So let's now add some logs here so we can see what's going on. Okay, and now let's just open the console, refresh the page to make sure, and I'm just going to run it. So there we go, successfully saved post.id, and, and you know it saved it correctly because post.id actually has an ID now, so we know it's after it's been saved on the server. So for one save, for one situation here, it doesn't seem like it offers us much more. We've kind of just syntactically replaced the object with the success and error callbacks with just this then function. So let's just expand this out now so it, it's looking closer to the example we had previously. So in the example we had previously, we successfully saved and then we loaded the object again. So let's do, let's load up that same object to do a get. So new parse query, 
post we used q.get and post.id so we'd pass it the id okay but what does q.get return now again q.get returns a promise so instead of having to add success and error callback as a second parameter we can if we wanted to just use then again here with its own success function okay but again that doesn't look like it's much better than the the callback issue because really we're just nesting these callback functions deeper and deeper we're just using a different syntax we're using this then function instead of this object with success and error callback handlers so one of the neat things about then is that if you return from one of your functions, so if, if the function, either the success or error function, returned another promise, so remember q.get gives you a promise, so now this, this success function is now returning another promise, it means you can chain it, so you can chain promises together. So in fact, let me show you now, so. Okay. So now what, what is the result? of this whole thing. Again, it's another promise object. So what we can do is we can then call then and chain it at the end. Then function success object function error object error Let's add that error at the end. And now, if you remember, when we after we got it, we wanted to set some data back onto it. So let's just paste that code in. And let's just leave it at these two updates. And again, we can return. Then we post our save. And again, we can just return the promise and it will go through again on either side. And because that's that save, so now at the end of this, we can add another then function success object. Again, we can add another error function. <laughs> Finally, I can just type something like successfully edited poster ID. Okay. So just to go through this quickly again, so we do post.save, and then we're saying, if it's a success, successful save, then call this function. In this function, we do a, a get, which again returns a promise, and we return it from this function. So this then now, will get this success handler, and this then will get called when this get request completes, okay? And then this success handler returns a save, so then the next then will get called when this save completes. Okay, so let's have a look. Clear this, run. Did you see that? It first did a save, after the save, it did a got, then after the got, it did an edited. If you see it, hopefully this records properly, but if you see there's a slight delay on each one, very slight. That's, that delay is because of the network request. It's actually waiting. So the, this is waiting for this save to complete before it executes. Then this edited is waiting. It doesn't get run until this got returns. Okay. So now we're starting to look clearer. I mean, basically what we can see is that the code gets executed closer to the order in which it's written on the screen, which makes it easier to understand what's going on. But there's a final pretty cool feature of promises, at least the parse impl implementation of promises, is that errors are propagated up. As long as we have this error function at the end of the chain, this will always get called, even if this initial save fails. It will propagate it through the thens until it finds a then with an error function and it will call it, and it will call that error function. So what we can do, just to clean up a little bit more, I'm gonna remove this error callback, I'm going to remove this error callback. Okay, so we just basically have a success function. If that succeeds, it calls this function. If the save fails, it calls the error function at the end. Again with this, if the get 
succeeds, it calls this function. If the get fails, it calls this error function at the end. And then finally, from this final save, if that succeeds, it calls this function. If it fails, it calls this function at the end. So this capability of just chaining together actions through promises is pretty useful and it can let you easily sequentially order your code on the screen in kind of the order you want to execute it in real life, given that it's asynchronous. And finally, it's a really cool feature that you really only, only need to have one error handler in your chain right at the end, makes it much easier, makes your code much more concise than that callback hell we had last time. So here we've got 13 lines of code to essentially perform that functionality. And in this example, I know there's a lot of commented out code, but it's maybe let's say 19 to 40. So at least half the lines of code, I'd say. You can write the code with promises in about half the lines of code is if you're writing it via callback. So it's much more succinct as well. And it's arguably, it's argued that code that you can write in fewer lines is just easier to understand because you can literally just read it in a much shorter space of time. So which one should you use? Should you use callbacks or should you use promises? So it's a personal choice. I mean, most devs prefer the promise approach. And also I prefer it, and that's the approach we'll be using throughout the rest of this course. But in the parse documentation especially, all of their examples use the callback approach. So I wanted to make sure that you see both methods, can make your own judgment calls, and most importantly, so that if you see code using the promise approach, you'd understand what's going on. And also if you see code using the callback approach, you still also see what's going on and understand what's going on.